Okay. So thank you so much for everybody that is here. I'm really excited because to me, that shows me that you are really concerned you know, about your health. You know, you love yourself that much that you decided to be here tonight. And I mean, it's a Friday evening. A lot of people get to, you know, have so many other plans, but we are here today. So therefore, I'm really, really excited about this health session. I'm really passionate about this because, you know, um, it is something that I do, you know, for a living. And at the same time, you know, I've had so many personal reasons that made me come to a point where I decided to say, you know, let me study about health and see how best can I add value to other people. So I'm really excited that we're here and we're having this session together so that we can be able to talk about how the human body works. Of course, the human body is a very complicated, you know, um, organism basically you know as, as we all know our human bodies are very complicated a lot of systems coming and working together in order for us to function you know as human beings for day-to-day -day needs and be able to meet the you know the requirements of from our body for us to be able to meet whatever uh, requirements are required for from us physically so uh first things first um I'm not a doctor and we are not doctors here. Neither, you know, are the products even that I'm going to share about is products that I actually um, personally use, but these are not medicines. So we're not here to talk about medicine. We're not here to, um, you know, to stop you from any diagnosis that you might have or stop you from any treatment or mitigate any other, you know, um, maybe disease or condition that you might actually be in. We are here to talk about health not just in general, but to actually also look at what other options do you have out there when it comes to your health? What else is it that you can do that can actually also improve your health? So, um, you know, if you have any questions, feel free to pop in in the chat because I can see the chat from here as well. So the, one of the most important things that we need to understand, you know, um, I always say that, you know, whenever you're studying biology, you get to see the fact that you know, a human being is, it's a, it, we normally say we call them superhuman beings because there are so many things that are in the human body that we're even still trying to understand until today, you know? And um, this is because of the complexities that we have. So, so, so many times, you know, we, we just take our bodies for granted because, you know, you're able to wake up, you move, but you actually need to actually pay attention, listen to your body, listen to, you know, to say, what is it that my body would, need what am i feeling what exactly is happening you know with myself you know you're paying attention so the reason why i'm talking about paying attention is because the body is designed in such a way that it heals itself so from the time that you know um a, a good example for example is that you get um things like influenza the first time that you get it of course then maybe you now need you know a, a broad spectrum of antibiotics you need um you know there's no antibodies yet so it's, it's more brutal but the more you have it, the less brutal it becomes because your body naturally builds antibodies to protect you from such, you know, um, um, trivial infections as well. So it's another good example is that, for example, um, you know, when you, 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 you get scrapped on your skin, your body naturally knows that, OK, we're going to release you know what you call erythrocytes to that particular section of your skin. And then you find that you develop a black scab that actually, you know, um, gets attached to your skin to allow your skin to heal. And then you receive that, you, you get to a point where you actually see new skin that is emerging and then the black scab actually starts peeling off. This is a classic example that your body naturally is, is, is designed to heal itself. But there's a lot of things that come into, into, um, into play. Same as a car. If you don't put fuel, if you don't put oil, if you don't put water, at a certain point, the functionality of that car is going to decrease. So that's the same thing that happens with our bodies. Our bodies require certain nutrients. This is the reason why you find that even when someone is pregnant, they say that, you know, you need to look at uh, your cravings as well. It's not just food cravings. It's actually the ions and certain vitamins, you know, and nutrients that, nutrients that are actually in the food that you're craving that are required for the development of the fetus in you. So even as a, as a grown human being, everything that you put inside your body actually gives certain results over time. So, for example, there are so many things that we take for granted. Like, you know, I just wanted to put in, in the chat, how many of us have been told that drink two liters of water per day and we actually do it? How many of us? Because I know that sometimes it's not because people don't want to drink water, but people get busy. You know, you find yourself, you're at your desk the whole entire day. You've only had maybe one glass of water. That's less than 250 mils. 
So my question is, how many of us are tracking our water intake? You know, do you look at your skin for you to be able to see if you're fully hydrated? You know, I'm seeing some people saying, I don't even drink water at all. And juice doesn't count, by the way, because juice is actually the, the concentration of that. You've just decreased the, 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 the purity of the water. So it's, it doesn't count. I'm talking about pure water. How, how many of us say, you know, I drank at least two liters? So two liters, yes, everybody, that's good if you're drinking two liters, but however, it's not enough, right? So you find that on average, this is looking at statistics, we're looking at, um, you know, body size as women grow older, you know, so for a mature lady from, the, when I'm talking about a mature lady, I'm talking for about someone that is from the age of 20 years old, you need to be taking in at least 2.7 liters for men is 3.7 liters. This is also because you find that is, yes, um, our bodies are designed in a slightly different way between men and women. So the needs, obviously, also when it comes to our bodies are also slightly different. This is the reason why you find that even when it comes to skin texture, skin texture between men and women is very different as well. So there are so many things that are there within our systems that require a certain level amount of water for us to actually be able to function. So I'm, I'm starting from the basics today and I'm that's why I'm talking about water right now. So the reason why this is really important is that over time, like in, I gave you an example of a car. If you constantly don't put oil on time, at a certain point, the engine is going to be affected and that engine costs a lot of money. Same thing happens with your body. If you don't drink water for one day, you're not really going to suffer the consequences of that particular day. But when it actually comes, becomes something that is very consistent, where you're consistently depriving your body of certain nutrients, you're consistently depriving your body of water, you'll find that this is where someone starts developing eye problems because you're not drinking water. Your eye actually, the functionality of if everybody's eyes requires 95% water, right? So when it comes to um, the cells in our body, for example, you're looking at things like the transportation of oxygen from the from your lungs, you know, from, from your heart to your lungs and everything, you know, and the, the, the release of carbon dioxide, it requires what we call oxygen molecules that can only come from water because you're drinking that in as H2O. Everyone sees our bottles written H2O, right? So you actually need that oxygenated blood that you're breathing in to come in. And also you need the water that is also going to provide the hydrogen as well in your body for you to be able to excrete a lot of toxins out of your body. And this, the, 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 the way water is designed, the molecule, it easily finds ways to attach itself. You know, so whenever it comes to certain things that like, especially transportation within the body, water is the best medium when it comes to that. So you find that your eyes require 95% water, the heart 75%, the lungs 83%. So you might be wondering to say, but wait, there's no liquids that go into my lungs. It's actually absorbed through your body cells because your lungs are also produced out of living cells. So living cells means that, you know, there's water and nutrients and ions going in and out of, the, of those cells for them to be able to, to renew themselves, for the dead cells to be excreted. Those dead cells need to move out of your body in a certain media, that is water, right? You find that, for example, water is also required 31% for the, you know, a product, production of the lubrication of your joints, right? These are some of the things that we have. So you find that sometimes there's so many things that we look at and we trivialize it, but it actually has a huge impact on your body. So you find that, for example, there's so many studies that have been carried out that, you know, when it comes to certain deaths, you know, some people, they actually get to a point where in, they reduce their lifespan by three to five years because of just lack of drinking water, right? But one of the most... Um, impacted organs is your liver and your kidneys right so everybody's got two kidneys two kidneys one liver but what i want you to imagine is that for example you've got vegetables that you're keeping and you're not watering them they start turning yellow they start you know so i want you to imagine also in this case that the same you know like meat that we eat every other day you've got those type of cells that are actually absorbing toxins out of your body to try and remove them but there's no water to try and actually reduce the toxicity. When I'm talking of toxins, I want you to imagine anyone that has seen a bathroom that has a yellow ring on the water level, where it's corroded, a toilet. So I want you to imagine to say that if that is coming out of, out of a human body, 
this is someone urinating into a, a toilet, um, you know, a bowl, and there's water in there. But the, the urine itself is that strong and that toxic to the extent that it is actually now corroding the, the, the enamel of the, of the toilet bowl. So think about yourself when you're not drinking enough water because those toxins are passing through that urine, highly toxinated urine that is yellow, is passing through all your cells. You know, as the cells are trying to excrete that, it's not diluted at all. So all of those things have got effects. This is where you find someone aging faster. Your skin itself will even tell you to show you that, you know, you're aging faster. You find that even um, when it comes to things like your, your reproductive health, that is also impacted your muscles. You start actually losing uh, muscle, um, um, you know, uh, strength, tensile strength as well because of just lack of water. So there are so many other things that are there, but the most important thing that, that I've told you now, it's not going to cost you anything. It's just for you to be able to understand that I need to drink water. But the unfortunate part is that, for example, if you have been consistently depriving yourself of certain elements, things like water and, you know, things like nutrients, your body actually goes through certain changes that, you know, it can't go back anymore when it comes to healing itself. This is the reason why I said your body is designed to heal itself only to a certain level. At a certain level now, you need to, to supplement certain nutrients for you to be able to allow your body to heal itself because if you're not providing the nutrients, then it's not going to be able to rejuvenate itself, right? So I want you to also think about it because when I'm describing all of this, for example, we've got things like cancer. Cancer is dangerous because it affects um, healthy cells and destroys them. It disrupts healthy cells. That is what cancer does, right? And then it starts multiplying can those cancer cells that are actually destroying more cells, which is the reason why you have to cut out even some of the healthy cells that are around it, if it's a tumor, for example. So in this case, you have cells that are breaking down in your body, but you don't have you know, the, the, um, the, the, the liquidation that actually is going to allow them to be excreted out of your body. This is where you find someone with, uh, we call them nodules, like it looks like a pimple, but it looks like it's hard inside. It's actually got dead cells. There's no pain, no nothing, but some people actually have multiple of those around their body. That's actually a sign that there's something that is wrong. So this is the reason why I say that we need to make sure that we are looking after our bodies. We're looking after, we're listening to ourselves. We need to be able to see what exactly am I doing you know, how am I feeling when I woke up today? What's the difference between yesterday and today? What is it that I'm taking in? When you're eating your food, do you look at it to say, okay, this is, is it mostly to just, um, you know, make you full? Or is it mostly to just allow you to, you know, um, feed your cravings? Or are you also really looking as well to say, what am I adding into my body? And what result is it going to give me, you know, tomorrow and a few years to come? So basically drinking plenty of water is very important for your good health because it also helps with neurotransmissions, which is uh, hormones and neurotransmitters that are um, required by your brain, moistening of your eyes so that you don't suffer from dry eyes, you know, and all these other things. It also helps with things like regulating your body temperature. So your body temperature also requires you to be making sure that you're constantly hydrated. You know, absorption of nutrients. Water makes it easy for your body to actually absorb the nutrients that you eat. So I want you to understand that, for example, the reason why, you know, when someone eats a lot of food, but they're not drinking water, you end up suffering from constipation. That is because as much as, yes, you might even be eating a high fiber meal, if there's no water to actually aid the movement of that uh, bowel movement as well, you are actually just eating, but you're not absorbing nutrients. And most of the time, the little water that is even in that food, your body is trying to absorb it out. And this is where someone ends up having constipation. And that hard stool also leads to things like piles, right? Which are very difficult to actually treat. So all these things, they've got a ripple effect that actually comes to a point where you're getting to a point where some people, they now need surgery because, for example, you end up having things like kidney failure or your liver, you've got liver cirrhosis, all these other things. So it's really important to just stick even just the basics, right? So you find that I spoke about lubrication of joints. I spoke about uh, cell growth and reproduction. So I spoke about generally women 2.7 liters, men 3.7 liters, right? So there's what we call a detoxification and elimination of toxins from your body. Whenever, you know, in every process, there's always waste produced, right? In every process, everything that you do in life, there's waste that is produced. And that waste has to be thrown away. 
Same thing, for example, when you decide to cook the things that you throw away, when your body is actually um, carrying out its uh, func functionalities, there's waste that is also produced. Same way that you breathe in oxygen, but you have to breathe out the carbon dioxide because there's carbon that is coming into your body. It has to go out, right? So you find that our toxins, they enter through lungs, your skin, and your intestines. This is what you're eating, right? And then your skin, sometimes there's so many things that we apply on our skin that actually ends up resulting in high toxin levels in our bodies, right? So you find that, for example, things that you also breathe in, our environment is not so clean. There's a lot of exhaust fumes. There's so many things in our environment that are actually coming in and they're sitting into your lungs because some, some things, your lungs are not even designed to, to be able to, to, to excrete, you know, that high level of, of toxins. This is where you find someone that is constantly coughing because your, your lungs are producing so much mucus to try and fight, you know, the, 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 the exterior things that are being breathed into your lungs, right? And it's trying to, to produce that mucus to engulf the toxins and then also for you to be able to take out the toxins, right? So from that, the liver is the one that actually does the most of the work when it comes to excreting toxins from your body. And the side effects and signs of toxins in high levels of toxins are things like acne. So most of the time I see, you know, when someone says I've got a, a chronic acne, it's not necessarily meaning that you need to go and find the best cream first. You need to first clean inside, get rid of the toxins that are inside your body first before you start applying anything outside. Because this is where someone says, you know, I've used so many products, but they are not working. I've tried this, I've tried that, I tried Ganya, I tried whatever, but it didn't work for me. It's not because everything is not working, but the truth is that the truth of the matter is that you've got high toxin levels. So your body is then forced to try and even take out some of those toxins through your skin. This is where you find someone has got so many pimples, they look like eruptions all over, right? And in that case, you also have things like allergies. You know, there's also things like arthritis and joints. You remember I spoke about the fact that whenever there's no water in your body, that means the toxins are not being excreted as well. The, the toxins accumulate and it also leads to things like arthritis and autoimmune diseases. And then there's also things like cardiovascular diseases. This is um, related to your heart function, right? We also have a lot of things like constipation. Constipation is a very, it's, it's one of the, the early signs that you are not drinking enough water. And, you know, because the fiber that you take in should be able to, to, to coagulate together with the water for you to be able to have a healthy digestive and, and bowel movement. A healthy bowel movement should allow you to at least have a one bowel movement per day. Not to say, you know, once every two days or three days, at least once every day because you're eating right so from that you find that there's things like um diabetes as well because for example when you put high levels of sugar water is the only thing that can actually attach and uh combine you know there's what we call um it's a it's called a carboxylation reaction where it actually combines with the sugars to actually reduce the concentration of sugar in your body as well. So and, and there's so many things that happen in the body that, you know, like I said, every process produces waste. There's so many things that have to balance each other out. But for your body to have all of that functionality, you need to give it what it requires in order to function properly. So there's so many other things like neurological disorders, you know, obesity, overweight, right? Because the other thing that actually contributes to with just, you know, le uh, high levels of toxins and, you know, lack of water in your body, when your digestive system is too slow, your body then actually has more time to start producing fats and absorbing, you know, this is where you find that you're eating, but you don't feel full, you're eating so much, but then at the same time, you know, you're just gaining and gaining and gaining so much weight. It's also because when you also have, have high levels of toxins, for example, if you decide to say, okay, I want to go, I want to do intermittent fasting, I want to do, uh, I want to stop eating carbs, but you're not losing as much as you see other people losing. It's because your digestive system is not in the best state because you're treating it as if it's a new digestive system that actually, you know, is going to be able to function the way you think it's going to function if you reduce carbs and all these other things. And, you know, the other, this is just a pictorial, um, you know, um, illustration of what it looks like, healthy ki uh, kidneys and diseased kidneys, right? So I want you to think about this. This is the reason why I put this so that you understand exactly what I'm saying, right? And you can be able to understand the importance 
of looking after yourself, the importance of supplementing certain things. Because one thing for sure is the fact that, yes, we need a healthy, balanced diet. I'm going to talk about that as well. You need to make sure that you've got um, uh, water intake. But sometimes your body has gone far too long, right? So for a, a good example is the fact that, for example, when you, you have certain organ disorders, you will be given pills that you can take if, we, if you catch it early. But there are some advanced stages where there's nothing that one can give you orally that is going to help you. Besides the fact that now you're going in for a surgery or you're going in for, for, for an extreme, you know, measures when it comes to your health care. So it's really important to understand, like in this case, to say, OK, Natasha is talking about water and water intake today. But how have I been living these past few years? So if you know that, you know, you haven't been looking after yourself or sometimes you feel certain pains on your lower back because that is where your kidneys are located, then you need to find, you know, someone to say, okay, I need something, uh, uh, you know, um, supplements that are going to help me rejuvenate the, my kidney cells, right? And when it comes to your organs, it's so great because most of the supplements that you take, they are all round supplements. They actually help you with your entire organ health as well. It's not just to say it's going to just assist you with your kidneys. No, that's not it, right? So you find that people that don't drink enough water also suffer from things like kidney stones, constipation, urinary tract infections, and you know the headache, chronic headaches, um, aging faster. And when I'm talking about aging faster, I'm not just talking about your physical look. I'm talking about even your body cells that they actually begin to get older. This is where you find that, for example, you are 30, but your body is actually at age 50, right? This is where you find that even the, your, the functionality of your body is now that of a 50-year-old, but yet you're actually 20 years younger. So you find that there's also things like kidney failure that increase, and also kidney failure, unfortunately, it then also leads to things like anemia as well as heat, um, heart diseases and strokes as well. So it's really important to just look after the basics. So your personal health risk factors um, depend on things like your age, your sex, your family, you know, your genes, right? But then there are certain things that you can't change. For example, you can't change your genes, but you can be able to notice to say, okay, my line of my lineage there's a high possibility of diabetes. That means our body naturally does not regulate glucose, uh, you know, properly from the age, from this age, because your, your body cells are now aging. And when your body cells are aging as well, there's, there's certain functionalities that actually decrease, right? Same way as, you know, when you're a child, you can eat as much as you want, but you, it doesn't mean that you start gaining excessive weight. But when you do that at the age of 30, 35, you actually get to see the result of what is happening. Right. So in that case, that some of the things that are within your control are things like your diet, your physical activity. How many of us can say, you know, I actually have I make sure that I, I do something physical at least three times a week. Three times a week. Right. So in that case, that means you're not exercising things like your heart muscles. There's so many other things that you require. Right. So from that. There are certain things that are within your control, like your diet, physical activity. Even it doesn't mean that good. I'm not saying, you know, everybody should be a gym uh, frenetic. I'm saying that you can be able to say, okay, you know what? I'm going to take walks twice a day, you know, twice a week. Or I'm going to do this, whatever physical activity that you can do. If there's a, a distance where, you know, if you're at work, instead of driving around, maybe I'm going to walk, you know, maybe I'm, whatever it is, you know, what is within that, that which is within your control there are certain things that you then need to personally decide and commit to yourself, you know, to say, this is what I'm going to do for my health. And I say this with very much conviction because you'll find that, especially when you're looking at the statistics of um, the lifespan that people have years ago, we used to talk about, you know, people living to the age of at least 85, 75. Nowadays, all of that has decreased. We have a lot of kids that are suffering from, you know, heart conditions and they're leaving us at the ages in early 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s. These are your prime, eight, you know, um, times where you're supposed to be pushing your goals and succeeding and, you know, excelling in whatever it is that you're doing. But now you then find yourself now battling with health conditions when you're supposed to be, you know, looking for your finances, trying to see what is it that you can do for yourself and for your family. So it's very important that as much as you're looking after everybody around you, as much as you're looking after everything around you, you actually also look after the body that works, right? To make sure that it can actually withstand for the, you know, to, 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 see, the, to see through the plans that you have, the plans that you set for yourself, you know, each and every year. 
So you need to also look into things like exercising, a healthy diet, you know, and on the other hand, you know, you, you need to make sure that this is something that you can do and change so that you can um, reduce the chances of developing things like heart diseases, you know, compared to people that are not active completely or even doing anything about their diet. So the importance of a balanced diet is that, for example, everybody knows this is common knowledge that, you know, you need at least 30% carbohydrates, you know, 7% uh, fats, protein 12%, you know, uh, milk and products, dairy, fruits and vegetables. How many of us can afford to have this plate every day? Because I know I can't, you know. Most of the time, you know, when it comes to, in in my culture, our staple food is eating pap, you know, morojo and meat. That is th those things. It's very rare for us to incorporate, to say, okay, we're going to have meat and beans. You're going to have this, you know, or, you know, to incorporate, so to actually have a proper balanced diet. And most of that is normally carbs because then that is what's going to fill you up. So we need to look at it, you know, and for me, why, why this is really important is because I actually understand the fact that a lot of us say, you know what, I want to eat healthy, but it's expensive. It's not something that is easily affordable for you to say, okay, this is what I'm going to do, you know, and I'm going to have fruits every day in the morning. I'm going to make sure that I'm going to eat, um, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, um, d different types of beans. I'm going to have different types of proteins because obviously you can't have the same food every day, right? So it's really important for you to look and say, okay, what else can I do? This is the reason why the, the healthcare industry has come up with supplements supplements that are meant to help you to be able to say you know what what it that which i can't get from my food i can at least supplement for it and get it in its pure form in such a way that it actually makes a difference right in my body this is you actually looking after yourself not because there's already a problem you can even if you're already maybe experiencing certain conditions but even if you're not you need to be able to be in a position to understand that, you know, these are certain traits that could also impact my body. Therefore, I'm actually going to prevent, you know, this from occurring. So in that case, we have, uh, you know, a healthy diet is essential for your good health. It also protects you from a lot of chronic non-communicable diseases, such as heart disease, diabetes, cancer, you know, and eating a variety of food and consuming less salt and sugar or saturated fats is actually then what gives you the, if the effects that you require, which are going to be able to give um, your body that self-healing aspect that we spoke about, mm -hmm. right? So you need to make sure that your, for example, your diet uh, includes things like legumes, fruits and vegetables, foods from animal sources, right? A lot of fish and, you know, um, um, uh, meat, when, and normally when it comes to meat, it's, we're speaking of white meat, right? So how many of us can say I can afford to eat, you know, a, a white meat at least, three or four times a week how many of us and i'm talking about fish as well most importantly because it's totally different it's got fish oils that are actually re re uh, really good for things like our brain development heart cells and if they're really good you know when it comes to even our organ health as well how often do we eat fish You can put your responses in the chat. So the it is very important for you to be able to eat a balanced diet. You need to be able to get all the nutrients that are required. So every reaction in the body requires a certain nutrient. You find that, for example, there are certain things that are going to require your body to have at least vitamin D, or they're going to allow, they, they need certain proteins give you what we call amino acids. Those amino acids, there's 22 various different amino acids, but they are not supplied by just one type of protein. It means you need to have a variety of proteins that you're actually taking into your body, right? But most of the time, this is why I was now talking about the cost factor of it as well. It's not so easy for you to be able to, to, to ensure that you have a variety you know, of, of proteins that you're taking in for you to make sure that your body is receiving the right amino acids that you require. And you know, the, the other part of it is the fact that even those amino acids, they are required for your cell to cell development, right? So I'm seeing responses here to say fish every two weeks, maybe once a month, or even just on Christmas alone, right? So this is the reality that we have. This is the reality that we need to be honest about. Because on social media, for example, we all talk about, oh, you know, let's eat healthy, let's do this, let's do that. But I personally tried it, and I realized that I can't afford it. I can do as much as I can. Plus, at the end of the day, most of the time, the food that we eat is actually produced 
by people that do not have the health in mind. They have the consumer in mind. You know, this is where people are producing massive, uh, you know, where you find that some vegetables, they look ridiculously big because of fertilizers. You find that a chicken is so huge to the extent that it looks like a turkey sometimes. This is because of some certain chemicals that are also used so that it is more appealing to the consumer because when you see a bigger chicken for less price, you're most likely going to buy that. But it doesn't necessarily mean that is healthy for you. Because unfortunately, whatever the chicken was fed is actually going to stay in your body as well as toxins, right? So, and those toxins, they actually affect your healthy cells. And you now need certain, if what we call, um, you know, antioxidants to be taking in food that is anti or high antioxidants for you to be able to counter that effect, right? But at the same time, when you go to the doctor, the doctor doesn't have that much time, you know, to say, you know, what is it that you're eating? Where do you buy it? What type of groceries are you taking every month? It's not, you know, we can't all say I'm going to buy from the organic session anyway, right? So it's really important for you to be aware that this is what is around me. This is what I have. This is what I'm going to work with. However, I need to make sure that I'm still looking after my body. What is it that I can do, you know, to assist my body? What is it that I can, the same way you wake up and you decide to check the oil, that's it because you know that if, if the, if the, if the engine knocks, it's going to cost you a fortune. Also understand that you only have one body for one life. It's not everybody that is going to be able to say, you know what, I'm going to get myself a fresh new kidney. It takes so long for you to even get those organs and it's so expensive. So you need to look after yourself Look, because understanding that this is the only body that I have today, tomorrow and for the years to come. And if I don't want to be in my old age where, you know, I'm wearing pampers, I can't move, I've got severe arthritis or I've got dementia because now my neurotransmitters are not, are not uh, working properly, you need to look after yourself today. Right. So when it comes to non-communicable diseases, this includes that uh, they include diabetes, um, cancer, malnutrition, respiratory diseases, cardiovascular and mental health. Mental health is here because it's actually a very big problem. It's not just to say it's just your feelings or anything. Your feelings actually result in certain release of hormones. The same way when you're happy, it's hormones. That's why we've got antidepressants that one can drink and it actually helps with that. Uh, it's a condition. It's a medical condition. Right. So these non-communicable diseases are most likely associated with lack of nutrients. Right. So, for example, cancer, cancer cells, they are most likely to come up from a lot of people from the age of 35. So you find that here actually at the fact that cancer is currently one of the leading um, you know, cause of death worldwide with 10 million cancer deaths, you know, each year. So 10 million is a lot of people. And we're not even it, it, it classifying it according to things like things like breast cancer that come from that are contributed by so many things. And even when it comes to one of the the, 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 the biggest contributing factors to people even having de developing things like cancer is due to obesity. Right. The more, for example, in women, the more uh, you gain weight, the more those uh, fat cells actually produce high levels of hormones, those high levels of hormones actually make your body to start producing more cells those more cells they, it, it increases the chances of mutation where one cell becomes cancerous and then that is it that is all that is required and it actually starts impacting you as well um you know in 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 the future from that point forth to the future so people are fed by the food industry this is where i was describing that you know they pay no attention to health it's more about the quantity more than what is exactly it's going to give you know, or contribute into your body, you know, and then we are treated by the health industry, which pays no attention to food. I'm particularly in the health industry. And one thing that we know is that we actually plan to say that, you know what, we're looking at the trends, there's obesity, the obesity leads to the following diseases. Therefore, we are already looking at forecast to say, okay, that means we need to produce the following, you know, uh, pharmaceutical products, we need to produce the following medical devices, because these people are going to need it. But at that particular point, the public is not even aware. They're not thinking about it. But somebody else is thinking about a sickness that you're going to have in the future. So you also need to think about it that way to say, you know what, I need to protect myself from that, right? So that you don't have people that are actually planning finances, you know, and based on the fact that, you know, at the rate at which people are eating this, they're going to, there's going to be a population, this certain percentage of population is most likely to have diabetes or high blood pressure or whatever. Right. So we need supplementation. We need supplementation, you know, 
And I'm seeing here, someone say that even the bones of the chicken are too hard. It's as if you're eating bones of red meat. Yes, that is because of so many organic changes, you know, um, that are, uh, are being, you know, introduced. You know, there's so many things that go into, there's a lot of genetic modifications that can be made, especially when it comes to things like poultry, you know, and vegetables. There's a lot of manipulations that can be made in order to make, you know, for example, apples more green, you know, and to make, you know, whatever it is that you're eating, to, uh, even to, to stop things like bananas from ripening too quickly, because then that actually affects your customers. You need the product to last in the market and you need it to last in a good shape. So there are so many genetic modifications that can be made. So unfortunately, we, can't, we don't have control over this. This is the reason why I said, you need to ask yourself, what is it that I can change? What is it that I can do? And in this case, what I'm saying is the fact that we need supplementation you know and this is what one doctor said and he said that in this case uh you know he's from harvard and that in the his recommendation was that everybody needs dietary supplements and these should be included as part of a healthy diet and we are now at this point because we're no longer in that era where we were able to you know um, grow our own vegetables in the backyard where you know exactly what is going into your vegetables right now we don't we buy what we get we are fed what we don't even understand or know where it's coming from. So in that case, you need to look after yourself. So I personally use Forever Living products. I've used them from when I was a child. And um, the reason why we even used to use them was the fact that we didn't have medical aid. I come from a very poor background. And one thing that my mother knew was that aloe has got a lot of benefits. So in that case, she always knew that we, at the time it used to be in a, um, in a yellow plastic bottle that had a handle. She knew that... You know, whatever the case may be, Natasha is going to take a, a lid of this every day, you know, to make sure that I have the right antioxidants. At that particular time, I didn't even know what it was. To me, it was a punishment. You know, I'd say, but I ate my apple or I ate this. You know, why am I drinking aloe? But now as a grown person, I actually found myself now looking for it because at the age of, you know, 27, I was now seeing myself getting overweight, high toxin levels, you know, suffering from all these other things that I actually have a full understanding of. Right. So the, the one thing that is really important is that also when you're putting in things in your body, you need to know about the quality. You need to know exactly what, what, what am I introducing into my body? Because remember, this is like I said, you only have one body. Therefore, you need to make sure that you're actually introducing something that is going to benefit you. And COVID made it a reality. If your immune system is weak, you're going to be susceptible to any infections. And when those infections actually land in your body, the the effect, the impact will be too much compared to somebody that has a better immune system. So this is the reason why it's really important for you to supplement. So I personally drink aloe vera gel every day in the morning, right? And what uh, the aloe vera gel does, this is a 99% pure inner leaf. So I know that you might be saying to yourself, wait, I've seen people on social media that take, you know, aloe vera gel plant and they just slice it in half. They, you know, take out the gel from the middle and then they just, uh, you know, whip it up and drink it. Everything has a different species, right? Everything has a different species. There's certain things that are good for your topical application. That is your skin. There's certain things, you know, certain species that are good for you to be drinking for your digestive system. And every species also has different benefits. So in this case, Forever actually did the research for us to be able to ensure that you are getting the right species and the right version of aloe in, in order to make sure that you're getting the best value out of it, right? So this one uh, aloe vera uh, bottle, this aloe vera gel, I don't know who invited you, but whoever invited you, you need to ask them how you can get it because this is the number one most important thing because remember I said you are what you eat. So if your digestive system is also not functional, it doesn't matter. You know, even if you say, okay, I am just eating, uh, you know, uh, proper food. I've got my own veggies that I get from the farm. I do this, I do that. If your digestive system is not clean, if your digestive system is not in the right state, it's as good as in and out. It's not going to add any value. So the first step to it all is to clean your digestive system, right? And then eat right. When you're eating right, your body is going to be able to absorb those nutrients and those nutrients are actually going to be able to work for you in the functionality of your body, right? So the aloe vera gel, what it does is that it has got, you know, um, it's gluten-free. And obviously, it's in that case, it's also suitable for vegetarians if you're a vegan. But the most important thing is it, it supports a healthy digestive system. This is where if you're suffering from things like constipation, 
if you have um high toxin levels if you're someone that is saying you know i'm trying to lose weight my hormones are not balanced and i've been trying so many things clean your body first take the aloe vera gel first it's going to clean your body completely you might find that the first few days you experience a few you know different feelings because of what is coming out of your body but it's really important it's a good start for anything you can't say you know i'm going to to drink the following supplements but you haven't even cleaned your digestive system to be able to absorb it so this is your first number one step right and then in that case it also supports things like nutrient absorption because your digestive system and immune health is now uh, clean and it's now high it helps maintain you know natural energy levels if you're someone that is consistently tired you wake up you're tired at the end of the day you're tired you feel burnt out it means that you are not producing you know enough you're not breaking down um it's it's called what it's a glycolysis reaction in your body it's not producing enough energy you know you when you're breaking down glucose in your body you're not producing enough energy for yourself and that means that you need to allow your body to restart that system right so the the aloe vera gel actually assists you with that you find that it's going to boost your energy levels this is where you actually find that you are eating less but you actually experiencing more benefits from what you're taking into your body as well so i spoke about free radicals when i was talking about the uh, the aloe vera gel that if there are certain free radicals that are in your body that are not are not supposed to be in your body but either way they find ways inside through what we breathe in things like radiation kite source emotional stress can also make your body start producing free radicals right there's chronic inflammations smoke obesity right there's pesticides that we spray around the house the same way that they've got radicals that destroy and kill those pests you are still inhaling that as much as it's not going to kill you you are inhaling it and it has an impact in your body right there's pollutants toxins alcohol you know physical stress so all these are free radical contributors in your body and what a free radical does is it, it, it affects healthy cells and the more healthy cells you break down this is the reason why we say that okay someone that has got hiv the hiv cell it just destroys healthy cells right that's what it does but in this case the free radical it invades your healthy cells destroys but now your body can produce antioxidants to counter that effect but it's an added advantage when you're drinking aloe vera gel because it actually contains those antioxidants as well which also then teaches your body to produce a certain level of antioxidants that can be able to counter the free radicals that are being experienced by your body right so it this is why it's really really important so when it comes to things like balancing your hormones all these other things start by first cleaning your digestive system that is where everything is going to start so we also have things like fish oil i asked to say how many of us eat fish and there's you know not a, a very convincing number or even the frequency thereof because a lot of people consume red meat but unfortunately red meat actually has a lot of you know side uh, effects that actually it's it's fine it's a good protein but at the end of the day too much of it actually has a, a negative impact on your body and this is where you find that it also ends up affecting because red meat actually takes a very long time to 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 be digested in your body this is where you find that it actually ends up making your body accustomed to a slow digestive system which is not what is required right so you need to be able you can't eat red meat on, on you know consecutive days or consecutive meals because all that red meat actually piles up inside and it takes so long for your body to be able to pass that bowel movement so you need to be able to have other things like white meat and in this case fish oil as well so fish oil is really good for things like brain development if you're someone that is forgetful you find that for example you say ah, i'm just forgetful no it's not it's not something that should be passed over by just being forgetful and look at how old you are if you're finding yourself that you're forgetful at the age of 30 35 ask yourself what am i going to be doing at the age of 50 and 60 what will i still be able to embrace my mind will i still be actually fully functioning in my mind so you need to look after yourself those things are very important we've got a lot of kids that go to school and then you say my child you know they he or she just can't grasp information it's not because they can't grasp information completely but there are certain nutrients that they require for those neurotransmitters to also function right so this those same things so in this case the fish oil what it does is that in this case it, it has high levels of things like what we call omega 3s that are associated 
with lowering risk of um, heart failure, coronary diseases, you know, and all these other things. And above all else, it's really good when it comes to, you know, brain development. I talk about this a lot because I see that we now have high levels of people suffering from dementia at very young ages as well, which is something that is not common. You know, a lot of people will say, you know, when I was your age, I used to be able to remember what I'm told, you know, where, where you talk to a child and you have to tell them three, four times before it actually sits in their mind that this is what I'm being told. It's not necessarily to say that it's, 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 they, they, they lack attention, but it's actually the grasping of information, right? So in that case, one of the other products that you can have, supplements rather, that you can, that you need to have in your house is what we call Arctic C. So Arctic C is very, very important. I'm only sharing five because obviously I'm not expecting you to have a, a lot, but I'm sharing you the things that I know are going to be an all-rounder. They're going to change your, your, you know, how your body feels, how you actually feel in your own body as well. So Arctic C is very good for your cardiovascular health. If you find yourself hyperventilating all the time, you need Arctic C as well, right? Because it means your heart is pumping fast, but you're not absorbing as much oxygen fast enough so your body has got a high oxygen demand, you are breathing, but it's also failing to absorb that amount of oxygen when you're breathing it in as well. This is where you find that two people, same size, sometimes they can go up the stairs, but they're in a different state when they get there, right? So that's already a sign that shows you that there's other things that require, you know, supplementation for your body to heal itself. I'm not saying you're going to take these things for life. You're going to take it until your body naturally can do that for itself, right? So from that, you know, um, uh, the, the Arctic Sea also supports things like your joint function, mobility, immune response. Immune response is linked to your, to your brain development. So a lot of this is actually you, your brain has to coordinate everything. So you need to ensure that you are actually looking after that organ as well, because that the moment someone is, for example, brain dead, that is where you find that they can't they can't move certain parts of their body because there's no coordination from the certain part of their brain. So it's really important for you to look after yourself. You need to look after you know um, um, things like your your. It's also a mood booster. In this case, when I say mood booster, it's because it allows your body to produce the right level of hormones that allow you to be able to control your emotions. You know, you, you where you're not somebody that you find yourself in different emotions, but you've got absolutely no explanation why, right? So it also reduces things like cholesterol levels. Cholesterol is when you've got fat build up in your arteries. So for example, I want you to imagine a, a water pipe that has got um, thick, you know, um, dried fat around inside. When you try and, you know, allow water to pass through, it doesn't matter how much pressure you put, it's still going to actually you know, come out at a very low speed at the end. You might even burst the pipe somewhere in the middle because the water is too much, but at the end, there's so much fat that it's actually blocking it. Same thing happens when it comes to your arteries. This is where you find that they say someone's artery burst, you know, they, or it's got a weak spot. This is because the part of it is actually full of cholesterol. So these are things that actually happen. The same way, for example, if you, if you, if you cook fat, you know, and it, it liquidates, you leave it at room temperature, it actually solidifies. That, that shows you the reactions of fat even inside your body as well. So it's really important for you to make sure that, you know, you reduce cholesterol at all time. If cholesterol is not even about you being overweight or you look small, you can still accumulate cholesterol within your arteries. It's not about the size at all. So it also, Arctic Sea also then also pre uh, prevents things like skin wrinkling. And then the other product that I want to share with you is Super Greens. And the reason why I'm sharing Super Greens with you is because it's not every day that we're able to buy vegetables. It's not every day that we're able to ensure that we are actually taking more vegetables than we're taking carbs or proteins or all these other things. So you, if you at least have that one sachet, you know, once or uh, twice or three times a day, it doesn't matter how many that you can. But at least if you can have that, you're actually ensuring that it's like you've actually eaten the vegetables that you would have actually required, right? And for me, this is something that I actually used for my parents because my parents, you know, old age, so many things just happen. You know, you find yourself that the eyesight, diabetes is kicking in, blood pressure. And we are now at a point where they are actually able to move around. They're able to work around in the farm because of all of this, right? So it's really, really important to be able to supplement because even as, as your body actually begins to, to be, become better, you are able to do more 
and actually experience life as what it is supposed to be without any limitations, you know, where you can't carry certain things because your bike is going to lock or certain things like that, right? So we also have things like berry nectar, um, you know, vitalize. Berry nectar is really good for your organ health. And then I've put here vitalize for women. There's also vitalize for men. The reason why I put this here is because, like I mentioned in the beginning, the, the, the female body and the male body are slightly different. There are certain hormones that women have, estrogen, progesterone, that men don't have. Men also produce things like testosterone. And, you know, they've got different organs like a prostate. Women have got womb, they've got cervix, they've got, you know, uh, ovaries and all, all of that. So you need to look after your reproductive health. It doesn't matter whether you're trying to conceive or not. Your reproductive health is important because you need to avoid things like having cysts or having fibroids things that end up leading someone to say, okay, they now need to go in for surgery, which is unnecessary. Yes, you know, um, the, 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 the cycle of life takes place where you're going to, 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 to develop into a young adult, a young woman. At some point, you're going to go through menopause, but those are stages of life that are natural. So in order to actually look after your cycle, you need to ensure that you take vital life for women. This is specifically for women. So this is where you find that sometimes people go on their periods, but they're not releasing everything. They've got certain, you know, um, um, uh, undeveloped, we'll call them all sites inside their womb that are actually stagnant there. They are staying there. So you find that sometimes when some people take vitalized, they'll come and say, you know, there's so much that is coming out of my body. Yes, it's, it's good for your reproductive system to be clean, functional, and actually just, you know, functioning the way it is supposed to be on the 28-day cycle or whatever your cycle numbers are, right? So in that case, same thing for men. A lot of men, they actually consume a lot of red meat. A lot of men love things like brise and all these other things that actually affect prostate health. But unfortunately, this is not an organ that you can look at and say, you know what, I think my prostate is increasing here. It's not something that you can feel during the early stages. Same things, you know, when people have urinary tract infections, it's not something you can pick it up maybe faster, especially in women than in men. But these are certain things that build up inside first before you actually see the fruits of it outside. Same thing when, uh, uh, you know, a woman gets things like a yeast infection. It does not start by you seeing that, okay, there's something wrong here. You actually need to understand that this is coming from inside. You know, your cervix, your womb, everything is infected. So even as much as we take antibiotics and all these other things, if you don't finish your course, you actually have, you are breeding a different version of that infection in your body that is actually going to require a different treatment once again. So it's important to clean your organs, to allow your organs to rejuvenate themselves. You know, especially for the female organs, it, it knows how to clean itself. It's, it's built that way. But you need to supply the right nutrients for it to be able to do that. When it comes to men, the prostate health is very important because this is where you find someone saying they are suffering from prostate enlargement. And it's very it's, it's not something that is desirable to see when a grown man is going through prostate enlargement or, or, you know, prostate cancer, all these other things, because it affects sexuality for men and sexuality for men is everything. At the same time, it's not even just about sexuality. It's the amount of pain that one has to go through, you know, when they're for, for this particular treatment, if it can still be treated. So it's important to say once in a while, take supplements for vitalize for women, vitalize for men to look after yourself. It also looks after, for men, um, the, the vitalize for men actually also looks after testicular, um, testicular function, right? And this is really important because I've, I've actually been exposed to see at a certain point where someone had a, a, a blocked um, testicle tube and the pain that they had to go through in that case where it inflammated to the extent that, you know, you now have to drain the water out, you have to drain, you it's better to prevent than to get to those stages. It's better, you know, to get to, 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 to prevent yourself and ensure prevention is better than cure. You know, you might say today, you know, when you're writing your grocery list, put supplements, you know, at least one or two every month, look after yourself. As much as you, you might be a mother, you might be a father, that's even more reason for you to ensure that you live to look after your family because there's nobody else that can do it better than you. So you have to look after yourself in order to be able to look after those that are around you. So my last words is love yourself. Love yourself completely. Put yourself first. You are very important. Your body is important. Your body is the best version of yourself that you ever have. So you need to ensure that you love yourself. Look after yourself and, you know, ensure that you are investing in your health. You know, do frequent medical checkups. 
when it comes to things like checking for cervical cancer at least once a year, visit the dentist at least twice a year, you know, get your hormones checked, prostate at least once or twice a year, get frequent medical checkups, you know, where you can. If you can't get frequent medical checkups, you know, talk to us to say, you know, these are certain things that I do. We've got doctors amongst us as well that we do business with. They can be able to, to assist you, right? At least then you can be supplementing and be able to know that I'm, I am looking after myself. By the time you can go for the medical checkups, at least you know you've actually been doing something for yourself and for your body. So your health is an investment. It is not an expense. It is definitely not an expense. Because one thing that I can say is that, for example, when you it comes to a point where you now need to get surgery in South Africa for you to be admitted is 3,000 rands per day. And you will definitely not spend more than 3,000 rands for on supplements per month. So when it comes to, you know, getting to a point where it's, 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 it's at a point of no return, you would rather ensure that you look after yourself. This is why they say prevention is better than cure. It is cheaper than cure. So Look after yourself. And my last words to use, your health is an investment, not an expense. So now just go back to the person that invited you, you know, talk about the supplements further, see what you can start with. If you ask me, ensure that you at least get the aloe vera gel, at least you get the Arctic Sea and be able to start someone with your health.